Hi, it's Jen Krasinski again from the Pittsburgh Botanic Garden. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, chicks and chick care. So first get yourself a pencil or pen, pad of paper, so that you can write your thoughts down as you watch the video. Um, you can go back and take a look and uh, you know replay things that you have questions about and of course the internet is just full of all kinds of uh, advice and resources but uh, these are the things you're going to need to think about when you are considering chicks okay now if you have figured out if you can have chickens or not uh, great if you can then you're going, your next question is going to be, do I want chicks, day old chicks, or do I want pullets? The difference between the two is uh, day old chicks are shipped through the mail. Uh, the reason that they can go through the mail is because when you crack open an egg, a lot of people think that the yolk is the future chick, and that's not true. Uh, the yolk is actually the food source for the chick inside the egg. Um, because of course chickens are not uh, birth live they are laid uh, in eggs and the hen not obviously sits on the nest or they're incubated um, the chick doesn't have a direct food source to the outside so that's what the yolk is for now when a chick hatches it continues to feed off the yolk it has absorbed the yolk into its body but there's still some reserves and that it can rely on because uh, hens lay one egg per day. And they will lay, boy, up to a dozen eggs, sometimes more, and then sit on them. That means that each of those eggs is a day older or younger than one another. And so these chicks are gonna hatch and the mother still has to lay on her nest so the chicks need a reserve to be able to survive as their mother hatches the other eggs. So if you decide you want day old chicks, you're going to need a uh, setup that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Uh, but you can also choose to get pullets. Now pullets are chickens that are about 16 weeks old, which means that they are old enough to begin laying. So uh, you'll basically get chickens that are just ready to go, ready to start laying eggs. I know that there are several companies uh, in the area that you can actually rent a coop and two or three chickens. Uh, you're always gonna wanna have at least more than one chicken because they're social animals. And uh, so, but they'll come with uh, two or three chickens and they'll already be laying. And usually you get them for about three months. And if you decide that chickens aren't for you, you can return them and not worry about it. Okay, now let's say you've decided you want day old chicks. You're gonna need a few things first. Uh, you're gonna need a feeder and water. Uh, they're both gravity fed, which means that you're just gonna uh, fill up this portion and these just screw off of the base uh, and you'll fill it up with water or with feed and the as the chicks eat the feed or drink the water the re reserve feed or water will come down into your uh, little trays here and um, you won't have to fill them up quite as often. Now you can really feed them from any container you want although this is nice because it does keep the feed uh, relatively inside there. The chicks are very, very messy, uh, but you will definitely want to get a waterer like this uh, because chicks actually can drown. Um, and they can also get really cold if they get into water and can't dry themselves off, uh, they can die. So this kind of a water has a shallow tray here and it uh, it allows the chicks to be able to drink the water and even if they step in here, they're not going to get their feathers wet and they're not gonna drown. Um, so something else you're gonna need is uh, a heat lamp. Now, I know that they do actually have uh, heating devices for brooders now that kind of look like small little tables and 
the heating element is underneath and it's really safe. And that's great if you can get those. Uh, but if you can't, uh, this is a, what most people use. This is a heat lamp. Uh, this is a heat bulb and a shop lamp. You can get these really at any Home Depot. Uh, this is a spring mechanism that allows you to hang it wherever you need to hang it. Uh, and this heat lamp gets extremely hot. So you want to make sure you have a cage here in case it accidentally fell. It would protect the bulb from shattering and it would also uh, give you a couple of seconds to be able to grab it and get it out of the bottom of the brooder because it uh, can definitely catch fire. So you need to make sure that your heat lamp is really secured uh, in order to be safe with your brooder. Uh, because most of us, if you're going to have day old chicks, uh, you're going to want to keep your chicks in your house somewhere, even if that's your garage. Uh, but I do tend to find that garages are a little bit cold, especially the times that we tend to get chicks, which is around April or May. Uh, it's still pretty cold in there and chicks do need, uh, they need to be nice and warm. Uh, and I believe it's 95 degrees to start out with. And then each week you're going to lower that about five degrees. And that's the rule of thumb, but I've found that actually You'll be able to tell uh, if your chicks are ready to be a little cooler or not by watching them and their behavior. But you definitely want to start out at 95 degrees. Um, and something else you're going to want besides chick feed, which I actually don't have because I've used them all up and <laughs> my chicks are older, you're going to want some chick grit. Um, I said in another video that chickens don't have teeth and the way that they digest their feed is that they swallow uh, small rocks. Well, when they're chicks, obviously they can't get a too big a rock. So this is uh, just some chick grit. It's just tiny, tiny little stones that they'll be able to eat. And I actually just feed this to my older chickens as well because uh, you just you're gonna your chicks are going to be way bigger before you'll uh, run out of chick grit. And so it works just fine with some little bit bigger stones as well. All right, now we're going to talk about the overall brooder since I showed you uh, what the little elements that go inside the brooder are. Uh, this is my setup. It's actually a dog kennel uh, that I have put cardboard around and I just tie, zip tied it to the outside. And the reason you're going to want that cardboard there is to make sure that the chicks don't uh, get wind drafts. It can make them too cold and they can die. So this cardboard protects them from any drafts that might get into your house or wherever you happen to be uh, brooding them. And you see here is my heat lamp. Uh, and I actually have a little jar to raise it up a bit. Uh, and you'll notice the really important part about this heat lamp setup is that I have it on one side of the cage. And that's important because the chicks will uh, regulate their body temperature by if they're colder, they'll go underneath, directly underneath the heat lamp. But if they uh, are too warm, then they'll move out to the sides. Now this is uh, something that you're gonna wanna stay aware of. Uh, if you see your chicks clustered over on the side that doesn't have the heat lamp, uh, the farthest away from the heat lamp, you're gonna need to raise that heat lamp because uh, chicks can get too warm as well. Uh, and like I said, heat lamps are very, very, very hot. Uh, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you have it only on one side of your brooder so that they can kind of regulate their body temperature. You really want to see them kind of hanging out in the middle here. Uh, if they are hanging out in the middle, then you probably have the right temperature for your brooder. You can see here I have my uh, little feeder on the inside and I'm sure my little waterer is over here. Uh, I like to put my feeder and waterer uh, away from the heat lamp because I don't want to make them too... Uh, afraid to go for their water and their food. They can 
be cold over here and they can run back over to the heat lamp for warmth. But if you force them to go to the heat lamp for their food and water, they could uh, either not want to drink and eat or they could uh, wind up with some heat stroke problems. Okay, so you have decided you want chickens. Uh, what are you gonna do now? The best thing to do is to go to a website like My Pet Chicken. I have ordered all of my chicks from My Pet Chicken. Uh, I really love them. They are specifically designed for the backyard chicken keeper. Although you can get a uh, hundred chicks as well from there. You just, uh, they're, they specialize in chicks as small as three chicks. And why do they require you to get at least three chicks? Because when they ship them, the chickens, the little chicks actually uh, snuggle together for warmth. So that's why they don't need a uh, warmer in their uh, shipping box. Although my pet chicken actually does put in a little, uh, it's almost like a ice pack, except it's a heat pack that goes underneath the chicks. So. That also helps them to uh, be able to ship so few chicks. If you go to other chicken uh, breeders, they usually have a minimum order of 20 to 25 chickens, uh, chicks. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Uh, Backyard Chickens is a wonderful, wonderful resource. Uh, they are really the place to go for any questions on raising chicks. You can join a chick raising group where you all kind of raise chicken chicks together and help one another uh, they have all kinds of emergency health care uh, tips for anyone who wants to raise chickens uh, mother earth news is also a great resource uh, and urbanfarm.com as well they're uh, just great resources for the Backyard Chicken Keeper, but definitely My Pet Chicken and Backyard Chickens. Uh, for the first time, Chicken Farmer, they are the go-to websites. And that's it. Really, uh, the hardest part of raising chickens or getting started in chickens is clicking that button and ordering your first flock. It is so scary and everybody thinks, oh my gosh, this is going to be a huge mistake. Uh, I am going to fail. Really, you won't. If you enjoy doing outdoor work, if you enjoy animals, if you enjoy learning about this kind of thing, you will be able to do it. Believe me. Uh, it is, they're not hard animals to raise. I kind of call them the cats of the barnyard because once you get them past the first few weeks of life, really, they are super self-sufficient, hardy animals. And uh, you just need to do a little planning and do a little thinking like you would with any animal. Uh, and you'll have fun. It'll be a great time. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about some troubleshooting for your uh, chickens because I have probably made every mistake that you can possibly make. So uh, I'll see you next week.